For 79 years, Glaswegians have been traveling under their city in the same trains that first ran in 1896. There's been hardly any modernization, the only real change being the price of a ticket. Please. In 1896, you could travel on the railway for a halfpenny. You don't have to wait long for a train. They come along every three minutes, from six in the morning to half past 11 at night. Each train has only two coaches, and from the platform you could almost look down onto them. things you notice about these trains is that they're rather small. You probably noticed that I had to duck my head when I got on board just now. The two carriages are supposed to hold 84 passengers sitting and standing. Well, as you'd expect, in the rush hour, people cram into them just like sardines. The track itself is a, a continuous loop. You, know, you can see it best from the map here. The trains go round this track in each direction. So it doesn't matter where you board the train or which direction you're going in. Sooner or later, you must come to your destination. The actual length of the loop is six and a half miles, and to go right round it once completely only takes 28 minutes. I was going to travel round the complete circuit through all the 15 stations, and for some of the ride, I'd been told I could nip up to the front and have a word with driver Malcolm McGregor. Malcolm, hello. Hello, Peter. Oh, it's round and round the circle, really, isn't it? How many times a day do you go round? Well, approximately 15. Seven times the first part, then we have a break of three quarters of an hour, uh -huh. and then we do the other eight journeys. What actually powers the trains? Well, this is one by electricity. You have four motors. Yes. And you have the live wheel that you see in the left-hand side. That's 660 volts, approximately. Uh -huh. And up above that, you have the T-irons, which because there's a light here, that's 260 volts for the T-irons. That's these two little these wires two that are running along the side there. The top, there. And that's, that's doing all the interior lights, all the, the interior all the lights, yes. Uh -huh. Are there any particular problems with driving around this circuit? Well, you have the problems, of course, with tight bends. Malcolm told me we'd just reached the biggest problem on the track, the Calcadden's Bend. He opened his door so I could look outside. There was just a one-inch gap between the carriages oh, yeah, and the tunnel wall. The bend goes around 76 degrees, and Malcolm and his driver colleagues have to take the trains round it with extreme care. As every driver does 15 trips a day around the circuit, he can carry on quite a long conversation with the other staff on the platforms, so long as he doesn't mind each section of the chat lasting only about a minute. The trains carry their own conductors. At each stop, they're the first off the train, and as you leave, you hand your ticket to them. Their uniforms, like the carriages, haven't changed for over 70 years. On the sleeves is some black braid, which shows they're still mourning the death of someone who died 74 years ago, Queen Victoria. Actually, looking as we've gone round the circuit here, I haven't seen any points or sidings or anything like that. Are there any? Yes, between Poplin Wood and Govan Cross is where they lift the trains. Any trains that breaks down, it's lifted up. So they can't just run them off the track? No, unfortunately, no. What do, what do they do then? They actually lift them straight off the track, just like on a model railway? Yes, supposing I break down here at Kelvin Bridge. Yes. The train behind comes, comes us up, and it gives me a, a propeller all it. the way to the car shed between Copeland Wood and Govan Cross. Uh -huh. And they lift the car up. It takes approximately six minutes. Fantastic. The idea of just lifting the trains off the track was so intriguing, I went along to the car sheds at Govan to see exactly how it was done. This train was needed in the repair sheds, which are 20 feet above the track. And by hooking the train onto a crane and giving a signal to the crane driver, it's simplicity itself to lift these 20-ton cars up to the workshops above.
The unofficial record for getting a train off the track and replacing it with a new one is a remarkable four minutes. All of the carriages in here have come for some kind of repair. The extraordinary thing being, though, that most of the spare parts come from old tramcars because all of the rolling stock on the Glasgow Underground system is as old as the system itself. That means it's all more than 70 years old. I think it's a great tribute to the skill of the drivers, the staff and the engineers that they've managed to keep it all going for so long. But now the long-awaited modernization of the system has started. New repair shops and sidings will be built, so there'll be no more lifting the carriages off the lines. There'll be interchanges with the surface railways, brand new station buildings, and of course, best of all, new trains. The old rolling stock, well that will end up in various transport museums, but until then, it'll carry on trundling round these tracks at one every three minutes.